Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Glass with Billy. I'm here again with my friend. Hey. Andy, <laughs> and we are in the wonderful but very windy city of Sejong right now. So today we're gonna to be talking about common misconceptions that people have about Korean learner. How long have you been learning Korean for? A long time. I mean, I guess I've been speaking it for over 15 years. I mean, during that time, I've studied actively for about five or six of those years and then learning more passively after that. But yeah, mm. a long time. And since this is a glass with Billy, uh, oh wait, that's your drink. <laughs> I've got a grapefruit soda, which is really bitter. I have a grape aid, and it is extremely sweet. I actually talked with Andy the other day, and we came up with a bunch of things that we've heard as Korean learners that are misconceptions that we want to clear up for this video. So I've written down them on slips of paper, and we're going to be taking turns pulling them out of a hat and talking about them. So we need a hat. <laughs> okay. The first one, Andy, would you do the honors? Sure thing. All right, here we go. We're learning Korean because we like Korean media. <laughs> this is probably the TV. most common one. TV, movies, music, especially these days. Yeah, I think- More so these days. I, I would say most people do. They're sure, there are pl plenty of people learning Korean because you know they love Korean dramas or uh, Korean movies or maybe some particular K-pop group, but that's not everyone. Right. You know, there, there are people who learn Korean for a number of other reasons. Right, and that's actually you as well. I mean, I didn't even really know what K-pop was. Same. Yeah. In my case as well, when I was starting Korean, I liked the language. Uh, the very first time I was exposed to Korean was at college from some Korean friends I had, and I didn't know Korean TV or movies or music or anything, just that they had this funny squiggly language that they were trying to teach me and I thought one of the girls was pretty cute. So yeah. <laughs> Most people are learning Korean though these days for that. Yep. But I guess don't assume they are. There are other there are more things to Korea than just movies and music. Uh, yeah, for me as well, you know, I Korean kind of chose me. Like I liked learning all languages <laughs> and I had a Korean friend, so it just kind of happened. You don't choose the Korean yeah, life. It just Korean kinda, life chooses yeah, you. Yeah, Korean just kind of <laughs> happened to me. While learning Korean, I came to discover Korean movies, music, TV programs, and you know, came to like them as well, so yeah. Okay, next one. All right. Learning Korean is pointless and we'd better learn something else. <laughs> We're wasting our time learning Korean. Yes. It's not that common, but I have heard it several times, which is funny because Koreans are normally really encouraging if, That's you're, right, yeah. if you're learning Korean. But sometimes Koreans are just so surprised, I guess, that you're learning Korean that they feel like, why are you learning <laughs> Korean? And I don't think they mean that in like a mean way. No, no. Actually, some of my closest friends uh -huh. said that to me when I was first st starting out. Why are you learning Korean? At that time, of course, I was still in New Zealand, so it seemed even more of a mystery uh -huh. to them. And I think because, you know, Korea and North Korea are the only countries that use Korean, mm -hmm. some people have the impression that it's not useful, right. when actually, for me, it's been, like, just amazing the different things I've been able to do because I could speak Korean, the people I've been able to meet. I would agree with that, that you can use Korean for a lot more than perhaps what you're thinking you could use it for. Like maybe you're imagining that if you spoke Korean, you could have Korean friends. Well, yes, you can, but you could also maybe get a job with it. What else, what else would you do with Korean? If you get married to someone who's Korean, <laughs> you want as well. You get the whole Korean country that you can do things with, not just one aspect of that, which is having friends. Yeah. And I mean, you don't necessarily have to have some kind of, you know, monetary goal like right. that you're aiming for you know you don't learn a language to make to money be, become rich and uh -huh. become successful well some people might but mm. for the majority people are learning languages because they en enjoy languages or they want to have a new skill mm -hmm. i would never think learning a language is a waste of my time right okay so next all right da -da 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 -da. we're learning korean because we like korean guys girls because we like korean girls yep Okay, that's totally true. Next misconception, <laughs> no. Actually, I mean, when I was learning Korean in New Zealand starting out, yeah, I actually got that comment every now and again, and it really annoyed me, to be honest. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. 
for me also, I just thought the language was really cool at first. I mean, I had some Korean friends and I thought a couple of the girls were cute, but I wasn't learning, I wasn't gonna about to learn a language to impress girls. I did end up marrying a Korean, but that was after I already knew Korean. I never thought that would happen right. otherwise. But some people do that as well. I know a lot of people start learning Korean because their boyfriend or girlfriend is Korean, and that's fine, but that's definitely not the majority of people that I've run into who actually learn Korean. They do it because they want to learn Korean. You're probably not gonna go through the effort of learning a whole entire new language just so you can impress a girl. I might, but yeah. <laughs> I love I love learning languages. So yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be purely about that. It'd be also be about the fun learning a language okay. as well. All right, next common misconception. All right, the reason you can speak Korean is because you're dating a Korean or married to one. Oh, this one really uh, bothers me, and I know a lot of other people also. And if you learn Korean a lot, and then a Korean asks you, the first thing they want to know is how do you speak Korean. So they're like, oh, are you dating a Korean? Are you married to a Korean? Oh, that's why you speak Korean, not because you studied it. Have you heard this one? Yeah, I've heard this a lot. Uh, and I still get this one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I studied Korean at university and um, I was speaking Korean, you know, years before I got married. Yeah, it, it kind of <laughs> annoys me a little bit mm -hmm. too. You know, I don't get annoyed at people when they ask it, you right, know, right. but you know, there are plenty of people who you know, are married to people from other countries and they don't necessarily learn their partner's language. Mm. You know, just getting married to someone doesn't mean you can automatically speak their language, which mm. I think you said. But I can't imagine marrying someone or dating someone and then you go on dates and all they do is teach you the language. Like, yeah. that's not gonna happen. You're like, oh, what do you wanna do tonight, honey? Yeah. I thought I'd teach you like vocab and uh, conjugation rules tonight for our <laughs> date. Like, no. you. You date a Korean person, you're gonna learn like next to no Korean, maybe some like phrases yeah. or something. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of the opposite. Sometimes it's hard to learn languages as a couple because it, if you're already speaking in another language mm -hmm. and you switch languages, it can be awkward speaking to each other and practicing right. using that language. Right, so either you meet a Korean who you can speak in Korean with and that helps you practice, or you meet a Korean you're speaking English with and now you're only speaking English with each other. But I, I also hear this one a lot. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> my, my straw got stuck to my lip, so it was just hanging there. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the next common misconception. We can't eat spicy food. <laughs> Lots of Korean food. So this isn't a language one, right. it's more a cultural mm -hmm. aspect. When I was younger, I definitely uh, would have very spicy food. Uh, yeah, I heard, I heard this a lot. People saw me eating some dish that was particularly spicy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people who visit Korea, what was I even saying? Something about spicy food. Oh yeah, but I guess there's a lot of people who visit Korea who simply aren't accustomed to any spicy food. And yeah. I get that, but being from- yeah, Some people in my family, yeah can't eat spicy food. Okay. So. I did have some friends who visited Korea and they could barely even have like tteokbokki, like it would just burn their mouths. Depends on the person, uh -huh. doesn't it? Yeah. So this, isn't, this is not a baseless misconception. Yeah. So there are people who really can't eat spicy food, but it's also a, not a misconception, but a conception. <laughs> a, uh, so next misconception. We're geniuses because we speak Korean because Korean is so difficult to learn. People said it a lot more, possibly when there were less people learning Korean. Wow, 천재시네요. To be honest, I hear it less so uh -huh. these days. Since there are more um, people on TV that yeah, can speak. Yeah, there's a lot more people on TV, some who speak Korean extremely well. So, you know, I, I think people accept that, oh yes, there are definitely foreigners out there now who can speak good Korean. But, you know, people still, of course, comment you know, on, oh, you can speak Korean well, mm -hmm. even if you just say, you know, say right, something. Right, just said hello. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anyone can learn Korean as long as you just put in the work. So I would say, no, no one who speaks Korean is a genius because they speak Korean, but mm. perhaps people who speak Korean well are hard workers. Though I think you're right, it was more common in the past than it is today. Yeah. Then for our final misconception, Go Billy is good at speaking Korean. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't say that. <laughs> uh, we don't care or know about politeness levels. Stop blowing for like five minutes. We're almost done. Have you heard people tell you or 
Koreans think that we don't know about this? Not so much that we don't know, but that maybe we wouldn't be able to understand it or it mm -hmm. would be too difficult. For those of you who are, might not be too familiar with this, um, typically when you're in Korea, you have to speak more politely to people who are older than you or you're not close with. But um, sometimes you might hear Koreans simply tell you like, oh, you know, politeness levels, don't worry about them, you know, um, or using casual speech to people who are learning Korean, assuming that they don't care about it or that they don't understand. Uh, why is this a misconception then? If you're learning Korean, then you know, you really need to learn how to speak the language. When you're learning to speak English, you learn to use the word please. Mm -hmm. Korean's the same. You, you don't want to, want to be speaking to people in a rude manner. Most textbooks start out with teaching chom de ma first, mm -hmm. obviously, and then later on it covers other speech styles. So, you know, most Korean learners are definitely aware of, you know, the different speech levels. Sometimes uh, Koreans will say to learners that, oh, you, you know, don't, don't worry about it, you can use pamma, right. you, know, you can use casual speech. And when they say that, learners kind of misunderstand that, oh, I can use casual speech all the time? Yeah. He, he said it doesn't matter. But in fact, what they're saying is that it doesn't matter to them. You know, mm -hmm. in front of them, it's okay, I don't mind if you use casual speech. But you can't go using that oh. to everyone else. It just doesn't work like that. Right. So I think there's kind of a miscommunication there that I see quite often. Okay. So have we missed any? Have you heard any other misconceptions about Korean learners? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Again, Andy, Billy, see you guys next time. See you guys.